onto the plain of Mora or Moriah, and the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land, and there builded he an altar of God to his people. God has a lot to say to you and I. Last week we talked about how important it is to, uh, to speak to the Lord, but I think it's even more important to listen to the Lord. Sometimes we come in and we unload our prayer requests and we truck on out and we don't worry too much about what the Lord has to say to us. This prayer relationship that we have with the Lord is a, is a two-way conversation. Aren't you glad that we have the privilege of having this kind of a relationship with the Lord on this side of eternity, that's a pretty big deal. You don't have to wait until you're in glory. Amen. Pray and listen. Recognize that prayer is hearing from God for sure. Notice again verse 7. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land, and there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared to him. Now when we think of an altar, we do think of uh, often coming around and gathering around this place uh, where the preaching of the gospel might take place right there. Uh, there can be, we think of family altars, but there are also other ways to look at altars. God's call to Abraham was the beginning of God's great plan to redeem and bless the world through a chosen people. The work that God began in Abraham will not be complete until Jesus Christ returns to earth. That's for sure. God took the initiative and approached Abraham with a plan for his life. He communicated his will to Abraham and in, real, and in a real sense, offered prayers to the heart of this man whom he had chosen to be his servant. You know, it's interesting to note that the response that Abraham made uh, was to what we'll call a prayer of God. God speaking to him. God wants to continue to speak to you and I. And so let's break this down. And I believe we can glean from this uh, a real recognition that when we are having a conversation with the Lord, when we are praying, we need to be listening uh, to what he has to say. And we sure learn a lot from Abraham's actions for sure. Abraham responded positively to the Lord's request. How about that? First, they notice verse 4. It says, So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. He said, Get thee. And you know what? He got thee. <laughs> he was told to go and he went. He was probably asked, Where are you going? And the answer would have been, I don't know, but I'm going to do what the Lord told me to do. We talked a little bit about this last week, but it really is true. It is of tremendous importance that we, that we, we hear what God has to say to us. You know, contrary to public belief, we don't have to understand everything. Matter of fact, if that in fact were the case, that would be in big trouble. Because I don't always understand everything. A sin that is rebuked repeatedly is the sin of refusing to hear God's voice. You may not have that on the top of your list when you think of sin. Seems like in some circles we're focusing way too much on everybody else's sin instead of our own sin. Right. You know, one of the best ways to not really focus at all on your own sin is to always be looking for something that's wrong with somebody else. Amen? And how about this one? The sin of refusing to hear God's voice. We should listen. 
We should listen to hear God's message to our hearts. That means take real time with the Lord. Allow the Lord to have his way with us. You know, have you ever shook someone's or have you ever had somebody shake your hand and they ask you how you're doing and they're already looking off the other direction for somebody else more important to talk to before they even hear your response? I mean, how sad is it that that will not listen to the Lord? We should listen as we study God's Word. The study of God's Word is not just so that we can just accumulate more knowledge and, and kind of be puffed up as, you know, knowledgeable Christians. Well, I can't believe that such and such doesn't know this or that. I know all these verses and I know the books of my Bible. I still got to dig around a little bit in some of the little books in the back. <laughs> the real truth is, we're to study to show thyself approved, a workman that needeth not be ashamed. Amen? We're supposed to be growing in our walk and relationship. So when you read your Bible, God is speaking directly to you. Amen. He is, he, I mean, this is the one that gets me. Well, how do I know for sure what the Lord is saying? Well, when was the last time you read your Bible? When was the last time you actually memorized the verse? I get this one too. Well, I'm too old to memorize a verse. Hey, listen. You're never too old. Are you no. still breathing? You're never too old. We should listen as we offer prayers to the Heavenly Father. I mentioned that just a moment ago, but I just got to tell you something. Uh, first of all, we're a... We're, a, we're, a, we're, we're already in the minority if we actually do pray in the first place. I mean, the real truth is, Christians don't pray like they ought to pray. And may I say, newsflash, those in leadership don't pray the way they ought to pray. And here's one for you. There are too many pastors who don't pray the way they ought to pray. And nobody should ever be so satisfied with their prayer life, should they? I don't think so. I mean, I'm just not thinking that that could even be the case. But I will say this. For those of us who actually spend some time with the Lord, let's do some listening. Let the Holy Spirit of God speak to your heart, you know? It's a great... That's why I believe prayer is enhanced on a Wednesday night because we've been in the Word before we get into praying. And I believe that that would be the case for all of us. Our, all, all of us, our, our prayer lives would be um, energized when we are already bathing our brain in the Word. We should listen to the gentle leading of the Holy Spirit. I'll tell you, I think we're pretty good at, twi at quenching the Spirit, really. It's so easy you know, there are a whole lot of things we do today that aren't sinful in and of themselves. But if it's some type of a diversion that causes you not to think on the things of the Lord, not to respond to the Holy Spirit pricking your heart and speaking to you, then you know and I know that that's an area that we ought to examine our own hearts and ask ourselves, Am I, have there been times where I was resisting... Uh, the nudge to, to pray for someone, to, uh, to be lifting somebody up. We should listen to wise counsel of Christian friends. Key words here. Wise counsel of Christian friends. Seek a multitude of godly counsel. Amen? And you know what, even if this person claims to be a Christian, and I don't even, it doesn't even matter to me if he's a pastor or leadership or a missionary, if it's not biblical, what he has to say, you smile and nod your head and you go off and do what the Lord wants you to do. Amen? Amen? Mm -hmm. You say, why do you say that, preacher? Because I've seen it happen. I've seen those who should be giving biblical counsel Stray off and just talk about, you know, 
emotional, personal experiences or whatever. Or they might just be having a bad day and have nothing good to say. Seek a multitude of God and counsel. Listen to wise counsel. You know what? We should never be listening to anybody who's not born again. And we shouldn't be listening to anybody who's not walking with the Lord. You know, we're in big, big trouble if the most important, the, the, uh, our, the, our greatest counsel is coming from, if we're the most spiritual person we know, we're in trouble. Amen? You know what I mean? If we're the most spiritual person we know, then we better start looking around for sure. Obedience was Abraham's response to God's plea. That's what prayer is. I pray thee. I plead. We should, we should be ready to respond to the Lord. When a clear impulse comes to us from, from the Word of God, from the Holy Spirit speaking to our hearts, do something. Move. You say, well, i got to make sure it's what the Lord is having to do. He'll never say anything to you. He'll never have you do anything that's contrary to His Word. That I can absolutely guarantee. But you know what? If we're not in the Word of God, if we're not, if we're not studying the Word of God, if we're not seeking counsel from godly people, uh, if, we're, if we're just kind of picking and choosing our conversations until we find somebody who agrees with us, well, we could be in trouble. But I sure do believe that the Holy Spirit, through the teaching and preaching and studying of the Word of God speaks to our hearts. We need to hear, listen, and obey as God communicates His will to us. You know, we ought to just be beside ourselves excited about this because guess what? This church is not run by some guy. It's not run by leadership. This church is, is moved by the by the moving of the Holy Spirit right. in this congregation. Amen? Amen? And we're supposed to be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. So how about it? What do you think? Do you think we ought to spend more time listening, hearing from the Lord, and then actually obeying what God is saying to us? That's hearing the Lord speak to us. Secondly, the Lord appeared again to Abraham. In response to Abraham's faith and obedience, the Lord appeared to him again with a message of comfort and assurance. Verse 7. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. Well, things didn't look so good at the time. Have you ever heard? Feel like the Lord's impressing something on you, but you look around and it doesn't look like it could happen all that easy. Circumstances don't seem to be in line with what you believe the Lord is saying. Many of us who consider ourselves to be men and women of God who want to love God and grow even still want the fulfillment of God's promises before uh, we'll take a step of faith. We want, like Gideon, we, you know, we'll throw out a, th a fleece and we'll, we'll, we'll test the waters. <laughs> now, I'm saying, you know, there are big steps that you'll take in your life and your children will do the same. And we want them to be wise and, and thoughtful and consider what they do. But there are some Christians who said, I'm going to move on this one. I think it's right and I'm ready. And they've been saying that for 50 years. <laughs> you know? Hey, look, you know what? Sometimes it's, it's, it's time to wait. And other times it's time to move. And you know, it's not always going to be that you're going to see some kind of a sign. Matter of fact, that's not biblical. You shouldn't be looking for a sign. It is significant that God really comes through when we are obedient to His revealed will. I can tell you for sure, 
what God has to say to us will always align with Scripture. It is not accidental that Luke records in the story of the ten lepers that they, they went, that, that as they went, they were cleansed in Luke 17, 24. In compassion, the Lord had given a command to these ten pitiful men. It was their response of faith and obedience that made it possible for God to heal them. You know, we ought to already be thinking God ahead of time for what He's going to do. Even when we don't know what it is. There would be more miracles in the lives of modern day disciples if we would give instant and joyous obedience to the clear commands of the Lord. And you know, as you read your Bible and you see God giving direction, correction and instruction, it's not long and drawn out with a whole lot of extra expl explanation. You know, you know, growing up for some of us, we didn't hear as much talk as we hear today. You know, there, we, we, we really understood when no meant no, right? We really understood when wait meant wait. And I think we've taken into our Christian lives some of the way we think in the world today, and that is that we're to, you know, talk the Lord into this or that, or maybe he's not quite getting it, and so we need to, you know... Uh, make our case in a greater way. The Lord knows. He sure knows. And I'm going to tell you what else. He doesn't, he doesn't, he, he, he wants us to already have this understanding that he has your best interest at heart. That he wants nothing but his best for you. Notice thirdly, Abraham built an altar to the Lord at Shechem. Again, verse 7. Abraham was discovering the faithfulness as well as the generosity of God. Because God had continued, uh, rather communicated his will to Abraham, a desire for fellowship with God welled up in his heart. And here we see really what an altar is to be all about. An altar served a number of important functions. Uh, we should build altars along the pilgrimage of our spiritual life. Some of us can look back even now at some special altars that, that were built in our heart at certain times. What about an altar? What does an altar represent? An altar provided a, a place for prayer. Just like an old-fashioned altar that we might kneel at during an invitation after the preaching of the gospel. An altar provided a place for, for offering praise to God. Amen. An altar provided a place for for serious heart searching and self examination. An altar provided a place for dedication and rededication to God's will. Look at Genesis chapter 13, right next door, verse 4. Unto the place of the altar which he had made there at first, at the first, and there Abram called on the name of the Lord. You know, when somebody comes forward in church, don't assume you know what's going on, right? And preachers, don't assume it's because of you. 
I know some preachers who think, well, if I get several people coming forward, then I must have did this, done that. No, 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 no. It's the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. And there have been times when people have come forward during an invitation, and it didn't have anything to do with what the preacher was preaching. The Holy Spirit was already working before that person walked into the building. And, and we, just like when we talk about breaking bread, our focus shouldn't be on who came forward and why they might have come forward and what they might be dealing with. It ought to be on what the Lord wants to say to us. And if you're looking around and looking at everybody else instead of letting the Lord speak to you, Amen. you're making a huge mistake. The altar provided a place for sacrifice. This is good. Genesis 22. See that? You see what I just did? You don't see me do that that often because I, I use this sticky stuff I keep hitting behind my other pulpit. Genesis 22, verse 9. Look at it again. <laughs> and they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Can I tell you that there are times when God will be telling you to do something that you don't understand. And this is one of the greatest examples of being faithful to the Lord. This is not an excuse to abuse your children. That's not what this is about. What this is about is trusting the Lord, knowing that the Lord is not going to have you do anything that he would not prevent. But you see, the, the sacrifice of praise, the sacrifice of trust, and commitment to the Lord can be found at the altar today. We can just decide on purpose that we're gonna we're gonna trust Him, trust Him, always fully trust Him. We're going to believe Him. We're going to look to Him. And when everything seems impossible, we're gonna trust Him even more. When we doubt, we're gonna doubt our doubts. I think that's the best way to deal with doubt. Doubt your doubt. Trust the Word of God. Don't trust your emotions. This time at the altar, this sweet, sweet time at the altar. An altar provided a place for remembrance. You know, Over the last 14 years, I know of people who have come forward and knelt at an altar that doesn't exist anymore. It's a brand new altar now that's going to be, the steps are moved nine feet back. But I'm still going to remember certain times over the years where people knelt and prayed and God worked in wonderful ways. Not only in times when people trusted Christ as their Savior, but when when Folks got right with their marriage or asked the Lord to help them during a difficult time or committed their life or recommitted their life to the Lord. Now, sometimes we'll even uh, make that public, but other times we've, we've got altars, I would pray, that we look back on in our life. I'm not just talking about that building right there. I'm talking about places where maybe you knelt down in your living room and you pray. I can remember many, many years ago when we were trying to buy a home. Karen, I don't even think she was maybe nine years old or something like that. 
So that made Justin four years younger. Do the math. That's before he had all that other stuff on his face. <laughs> Cute kid then. <laughs> I can remember we were we were praying that we'd be able to buy this house. And we thought everything was going together and lo and behold it didn't go together and the folks said we're sorry but we're not going to be able to sell this house we've got another deal working we need to get you out of the house and I can remember I can remember us mailing together Karen and Justin and Anita and I and Karen praying that, Lord, if we find ourselves on the side of the road, we pray that we'll glorify you. And that's one of my altars. Never forget it. And the real truth is, we actually lived in our camper for a little while. And I can remember when we were there, we actually had a little camper, and we were at a man-made lake there in the uh, Coachella Valley. And I remember Karen praying then, saying, Lord, if we've done anything wrong, we apologize. Those altars. And I know some of yours. I've been, a, I've been privileged to see the Lord work. I've watched you when your children have stepped forward and answered the call to serve. When they're no longer just children who have a God of their father. You get those altars. We have that great joy and that great privilege. How many altars have you built? Most likely, the number will be, determined, will be determined by the number of great opportunities, experiences, if you will, that you've had with the Lord along life's way. And what a joy and privilege we have as we look forward to whatever else the Lord might want to do. So I just say, this is a good time to say, Lord, we want to do our best to put forth a an earnest effort to be obedient as you reveal your will to us. Hey, listen, let's build some more altars. Amen? And as we have an opportunity to pray tonight, I can tell you, God is in the altar building business for sure. So how about prayer requests?